Juan in the building. All right, brother man. So you you um you're my subscriber. You reached out to me. Uh, you you text me. You wanted me to uh you know make the call to uh to to a company. And I couldn't pronounce the fucking name for shit, man. What what is what how do you pronounce it? Is it Kaz? Kaz Kaz? Cav. I think Cav Cav. Cav Kaz. K A V. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. K A V K A Z. Right? Uh-huh. All right. Rick. All right. So for starters, before we get in before we get into all of that, man. Go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, let everybody know, you know, who you are and what you was doing before trucking. Uh, my name is Juan Williams. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. I've been trucking going on about 15 years now. I done done it all from car hauling, in dump, reefer, dry van, uh, haul heavy equipment. Everything except hazmat and tankers and doubles. All right, so out of um, out, out of all the out of all the divisions that you did, man, what which which ones which which one that you gravitate to, and what and which one are you doing now? I'm actually doing reefer right now. Okay, uh, running team. Okay, but okay. I prefer car hauling over all of them. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and continue. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, what was I doing for driving? Before I was driving trucks, I was driving school buses. Uh, I drove school buses for two years mm -hmm. from the time I turned 18. And then uh, once I got to 21, you know, I upgraded my life to class. I went over the road. All right. So at about 18, you got out of school. You said, bump it. I want to go ahead and uh, grab my class B and, and, and jumped in to this school bus deal. What was What's the difference? Uh of driving the school bus back in the day because you know I you know as a kid coming up you know I was on the school bus you know the driver comes in the morning and then comes in the evening and leaves that whole little gap in the middle so after you pick up the kids drop them off at school go back to the terminal I guess you what go home and then you come back out go home. grab the kids pick them up from school, drop them off, then go home, wash and re rinse Do you get paid for the entire day like that, or is it broke, or is it split up? A lot of them, a lot of them is on hours. I was a, I was a contract bus driver, mm -hmm. so I was getting paid like one twenty-five a day. Okay. For the whole day. It ain't bad. Uh, one twenty-five a day, about what? About six hundred a week at about eighteen years old. That that's not a bad little pickup for you, right there. Yep. All that's right. Correct, correct. And uh, it was paying paying on every two weeks, so it was like oh, that was eleven hundred, right? Twelve hundred cash. Okay, okay. So picking up the kids, what 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 kids you picked up, man? Elementary, middle, high school. Head start. Oh, head maybe before they get the elementary, like. Yeah, four or five year olds. Oh, hey. okay. So you you didn't uh you you didn't experience any of the big kid issues. You you pretty much uh, had the little. I didn't want none of that. <laughs> you you just had the little kid issues that really, but it ain't even no issues at that age, right? No, it's still for it's for crying for about the first three or four weeks uh of school. You know, every morning because they trying to get into the rhythm of going to school. Oh, okay, yeah, because they're leaving their parents and, you know, they haven't been away from their parents for an, for an extreme period of time. And, of course, that crying is going to bother you, but uh, I, I don't think you let it bother you considering the fact that you was getting paid good every two weeks. So it wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't bother me at all. I was just two hours of this, and, hey, I'm going home, get back out again, another two hours in the evening time, hey, I'm going back home, so, you know. All right, that's what's up. That that's what's up. Was there the teachers though? <laughs> was there was there any type of uh now you you drove for a school bus company, right? Uh it was actually they they have like their own school buses, but then like they also contract out they oh, okay. also contract out uh you know, route. If you have if you have, if you know if you have your own school bus, kinda like an owner 
situation. Mm -hmm. And I was driving for a contractor, so what made you what made I you go and a get, nice book. What what made you go and get your your class B in the first place? Uh, my uncle, he was already doing it. He was a contract driver. He had been doing it already for about he had been doing it already for about twelve or twelve or thirteen years before I started and my grandmother and my auntie had actually retired. They did like forty years the same history. Okay, okay. So uh so you why why did you why did you leave? They what what happened? They they closed down or they uh or you just you just quit because you just upgraded to your A. Well, I would have been still there. They cut my rights. They uh they ended up canceling all the contracts and wanted everybody to I guess they were seeing how much money they were spending out. Mm -hmm. So they said like the last year, which was 2012, they said they wouldn't renew it by the contract. If we wanted to work again, we could come on as a employee, company employee. Okay. And there was like a $725 decrease every two weeks. So I was like, nice. no, and then more, more responsibilities. Less yeah, money. All day, you know? Less money, yeah, so. more time. Uh, uh, less what I say, less money, more time, more responsibilities. Nah, we we good. I'm coming. You you coming from good. you you coming from making about uh twelve, about fifteen, twelve every two weeks. To it's so it's this they they over here talking about paying you every two weeks. That's seven hundred dollars. Yep, it's like it was right like when he said like six twenty nine. I think with the Ooh. uh. For two for weeks? <laughs> for two weeks. Three hundred dollars a week? I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> oh, nah, it's yeah, it's 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 time to it, it's time to move on. So you uh you 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 went back. How was you able to how was you able to upgrade from uh from a B to an A? Did, did you have to pay uh did you went to the same school to do it or did you have to pay additional to get your A? I actually never went to school. I actually, mm -hmm. like, my uncles and my uncles, they either, you know, they either drove school buses or they either drove semis. So I, I always been around trucks. I was like 15, 16 years old driving school bus, moving school, school buses around. So I always drove big things. So, you know, I just went on the road with my uncle and watched him. And I'm like, you know, I can watch you and pick it up, you know, right. uh, real quick. Anything you do. I'm a fast learner, especially about watching it. So I just watch him float gear. Mm -hmm. I learned like that float gears and, you know, watch him bag and I just learned everything like that. And I kind of pretty much, you know, just taught myself. Actually, my day when I tested, I I went to the, to the Howard Patrol. So this is, so this is, actually driving 18 wheeler. so this is before, uh, this is before, uh, FMCSA man, uh, mandating you guys or mandating us to have uh have some school hours. You what you did? Would, way before this. So what you did? You 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 learned from your grandfather or your fa your father or your grandfather or both? Uncles. Oh, okay. Uncles so, and grandfather. All right. So uncles, grandfathers, you 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 sat there, soaked up, uh, soak it all up like a sponge, and you just. Just went to the DMV with, with what your uncle's semi or your uh, grandfather's semi, and just took the road test, and you good to go. Yes, sir. Wow, but well, yeah, we, we we can't do that no more, especially after. Uh, no, we can't do that no more. <laughs> yeah, we can't do that no more, especially after uh after February of next year, February seven. You definitely won't be able to do that no more. Yeah, they they now require you to have uh I think it's about a hundred and either a hundred and sixty or a hundred and seventy uh credit hours, including uh road, uh uh backing or skills and uh and the and the uh and the classroom work. Man, going are the days of just Hopping in the semi, going up to the DMV, and 
just go ahead and do that do that test and man Ooh, gone are the days of just getting your license in high school. Well, maybe you could. St- so, well, I, I, you yeah. maybe you could still get your license in high school, I guess. But, but I had to pay when I went to school. Uh, I got my license through high school. I only paid twenty five dollars, you know, for the for the class or whatever. It went to the DMV, got my license. Boom. My son, on the other hand. I had to pay what about five hundred dollars for 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 you know his schooling and all like that. So yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so oh yeah, but uh, but man, so that's so that's a that's a difference. So now, what, what? How do you how do you feel? How do you feel about the trucking industry as a whole now? after being in it for so long and getting your license the way you got it? Who is garbage? <laughs> wow. Oh, it's, oh, it's not, it's not fun. It's not fun. It used to be fun. It's not fun anymore. It's, it's just work is stress, I guess, man. It went stressful. It went stressful like it was back in the day. Mm-hmm. Was you, you know, at- monitor you, everything you do and, all the apps on your phone and what about the DLT rules and all this. What what about the money back in the day? Uh I'm I'm sure it was definitely different. Uh, way better. Different way. then and different now. Oh yeah, way better. I these companies now they think that people just I guess they just think just just pay your coins, I guess. And you'd be happy with it. No, I'm not happy with it. You want to take me good money? I'm with my family. I need some good money. What do you What do you think about What What do you think about these companies now? Uh, I, I I talked to a few companies, and I think Calf Calf Cas, however you pronounce that company, uh, they are uh, ten ninety nine now. You know, or yeah, ten ninety nine. Do you think uh? Do you think like company drivers in order to make some good money, they they have to go lease or they have to go 1099 in order to make some decent money, in your opinion? Nope. Nope. They're just a way they just a way for the company to cut down costs. Mm. All right. That's how I look at it. All right. Well that's what's up, uh, man. I've been in I've been in a couple of ten ninety nine Mm-hmm. Been in a couple of 1099 jobs, and it's never promising, you know. On both of them, I never got my escrow back. You know, they take out for escrows. I mm-hmm. never got a, never got an escrow back. Nothing wrong with the vehicle. Turn, return their vehicle back to them, and still was charged the escrow. What do you, what do you, what do you, uh, and 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 this is only your opinion. So, in your opinion, do you think, uh, do you think going company lease or going lease with a company? Uh, you know, let's go to the go y'all. to the dealership, get your own truck, and and do it that way. I, me personally, I prefer you know to go to the dealership because, like I say, you know, with the cup with the company, you know, you're okay, my yeah, my opinion on it. I think it's best for you to just you know down save your money and probably go to the dealership. You know, mm-hmm. uh, get your own get your own truck, and this way you had a freedom of you know. If you work with this company and it's not working right out, you know, you can go to another company and, you know, just see who, see who's a better fit for you instead of being, you know, married to one company once you, you know, kind of sign that lease. Right, right. All right, brother man. Hey, uh, I noticed, uh, I, I noticed your phone number tagging you uh, from Mississippi. Is that where you're from? That's where I'm from. Uh, uh, what what part of what what part of Mississippi, bro? Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson. Yeah. All right. So talk to us, man. There's there's a myth going on that uh, 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 uh or or a misconception that is going on in the trucking industry right now. That some of the truckers that's coming into the industry 
has yet to see uh, what we call lot lizards. Uh, you know, <laughs> to feed the, the 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 female workers of the truck stops, the the commercial companies, the uh, the ladies of the nights, man. But oh, yeah. uh, but um, <laughs> being from Memphis. In particularly over there off of uh, Lamar Avenue. <laughs> oh yeah. Are you are 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 uh, are are they strong in Memphis, bro? Yeah, they uh, they people say people say that, but me personally, I know, I know ran to one. Mm -hmm. I have ran to them in Dallas behind the TA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <on> Pope Street. <laughs> you say you ain't. You say you ain't run into none at uh in Memphis, but you definitely ran into them in Dallas, huh? Oh yeah, definitely in Dallas. Oh yeah, they be yeah they be they be networking in Dallas. I, I have also seen them in Vegas. So you know. Oh, but, 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 but Vegas is a is is a non-starter, bro. You, you know you're gonna see them in in Vegas. You know they it's shit. Oh. It's damn near league. Well. I know outside of Vegas it is legal. I'm not sure within the with within Vegas itself, but yeah, there's there's legal prostitution in 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 parts of Vegas, bro. Oh yeah, because I know I was I know I passed through one one time and we was passing by some boy and I was like, damn, what were they doing? And they were like, uh, prostitute. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, you know, like I said, in my in 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 my time, in in my time, man. Of course, uh, of course, the Atlanta Petro. Um, definitely, I I made a video back in the day, which is still one of my most popular videos on the channel. Um, definitely over there, Lamar Avenue, uh, State Route seventy eight, right there at that uh at that Mike's, uh, that Mike's truck stop right across the street from the two pilots. Then if you go down a little bit further, you know, while you're on your way down to that, uh, to that loves, you're definitely going to pass a few of them up along the way. Oh yeah. A uh, couple of them, a couple of them be there, you know, be there giving the trucker signal, the, the, the blow the horn to get the, uh, attention. And, um, uh, and let me see. Uh, I'm not sure Dallas, but definitely Houston, right over there, right over there where the pilot, the the, the pilot and the loves, and it's a mom and pops, uh, a mom and pop spot right down the street, man. So I say, and and North Carolina, the Duncan, North Carolina, right at that pilot. And oh wait wait uh -huh. wait one more one more Holland, Indiana right there at that loves I, so I was I was say you missed Indiana because I was say kind of Gary <laughs> the little oh. J. you know what as much as much as I frequent Gary or you say you say the wait I, I frequent Gary a lot you know I I have yet. Well, I I guess because they patrol the parking lot real good, but I have yet yeah, they, yeah, I, have, they, I have yet to see one at that TA. Now the I, I park over at the TA, but I heard I heard that the pilot across the street, you know, I have you know have a few have a few over there. Oh yeah, I know for sure the pilot. Yeah, so I sure I haven't uh I I haven't um uh, I haven't been I haven't I haven't seen uh seen too many of them at that at that TA. But now I don't know how it is now because number one they just got finished opening up the casino, uh the Hard Rock Casino, which don't have no fucking poker. I was too <laughs> through when I when I went over there. I was like, yo, uh, poker. Uh, we got we we got a uh, we we got a uh, Mississippi stud. We got ultimate uh, Texas Hold'em. I was like, no, 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 no. Take you know, like poker, poker, live poker, playing against people, poker. Uh -huh. It was like, oh no, no, we, oh, yeah. we don't we don't have that. I was like, man, 
Y'all just opened up a nice little yeah. casino and y'all don't have no motherfucking poker up in this bitch? Like, okay. I know, right. I know, right? I was in Vegas and I walked around forever looking for a damn blackjack table. And they had none that, number of damn slots in there. I was like, damn, where is the blackjack table? Man, you, table? Man, you, 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 you must have went to the wrong spot. Did you go to Bellagio? Where did we go? It's Caliber, didn't it? Was that a cat? That was Caliber? Oh yeah, it was COVID. It was COVID, so they had to sit down. Oh, okay, y'all they must. They had to sit down. Oh, okay, y'all, y'all must have went went to just uh, slots only casinos then. Yeah, because I I know uh, I know area I I know areas that you know that if they got like a live poker room, they got uh they got a uh what do you call it uh table games. Mm-hmm. So. All right, man. So right now, let's uh let's uh, fast forward into uh into into this call that you wanted me to do, man. So, uh, I I shouted out your the name that showed up on my uh on my phone, which is what precision auto detailing or something. First thing, auto detailing, Jackson. Yeah. So you so you so you still what what is that? You you you. What you do? Just uh I'm a detail you, shop. Oh, okay. So you have so you that that's yours? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. It's 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 still you still it's still in business? Yep. I got I actually got I actually got a customer coming in the morning around seven, seven thirty. Okay. Now you, you got people that you you got people that work there or this is you? I mean you're you're over the road team driving. But are you are you the one that's like coming back to do all the detail work, or you got people that work there for you? I have I have like two other people work there for me, but like the main job this this like big big, you know I I you know I come back and do it myself. Like this one, the more I'm doing it tomorrow, I'm personally doing it myself. Oh, okay, because okay. it has so much. You know, it has so much. Like when it get when it when it gets down to like the the the, the waxing and the high speed buffing and the cutting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, bringing the paint back out to the showroom finish. I mess with it because you know it's kind of easy to burn the paint with the buffer. So right, you know. Oh, okay, that's what's up, yeah. man. That's what's up. All right, so I got so I got the text from you know from that, and I'm like, all right, well, you know, you know what I was doing my little my little thing. I was like, shout out to pristine auto detailing, yada yada yada, and you wanted me to make the call to this company, so I did call. Uh, thank you for the support, man. You know, if you guys are interested in me giving a call to anybody, support the call. You know what I'm saying? They're not a, you know, they're not sponsored, so you know, lock dollar sign lockout men. It does help. I'm just saying. Um, so oh, I yeah. made I, so, I so, appreciate it. No doubt, no doubt. So I I called them today, and um, well, I let's put it like this: I I didn't call them. They they called me. <laughs> they they called me because I I left a message. Uh, you know, I I gave them a I gave them the list of questions, and I left a message, and then they they called me, and I was actually I was on the phone you know, talking to somebody else. So I called them back and, you know, the guy answered the phone. I guess that was their recruiter guy. And, um, you know, we, you know, at first it was like, you know, at first the conversation was kind of casual, kind of cool. But unfortunately I lost contact because I was in the midst of telling him who I was, you know, being that I'm popular in what I do now, I, I don't feel that I have to, you know, uh, uh, blind, you know, blind call and all like that. I can actually let them know who I am because nine times out of ten, majority of the companies know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like if I make a phone call, like I made a phone call to the one company today and they was like, is this lockout, man? It was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thank you for the call. You know, they was excited, you know, for me to call and excited for me to spotlight their company and all like that. So when I was telling them who I was, we got disconnected because I went to a dead stop. I mean, dead spot. 
So I, you know, got out of the dead spot and I called back. Phone rang, uh-huh. phone rang, and then it went to voicemail. And the voicemail said that the voicemail was filled up, you know, thank you for calling. And I'm like, that was my first red flag right there. You know, you, 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 you work for, you recruit for a company and your voicemail is, is filled up, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was my first red flag. So then, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well maybe, you know, maybe he's on the phone or whatever, you know? So I waited about maybe about 10 minutes, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Then I called back and the phone just rang again. And then it went to voicemail. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, okay, it's, is this guy ghosting me? Like, all right. I said, my, I said my subscriber wants me to get this information. So he supported the call. So I'm going to try and get this information for him. So I waited about another 10, 15 minutes. Then I made the phone call again, and again, it went to voicemail. The voicemail is full. You you can't leave a message or nothing like that. So I text him. I was like, "Yo, bro, you know," I says, uh, "I said this is Shine. I'm I'm calling back. I got good signal now. We can, uh, you know, can we con- continue the conversation?" I ain't get no response. I ain't, I ain't get no response, and I'm I'm now I'm feeling some kind of way because now I'm feeling like I'm being ghosted. So uh-huh. I said, you know what? Let me try this. All right. Now, see, me being the residual person that I am, I have more than one phone number. <laughs> That's connect that's that's connected to my phone. You know what I'm saying? So I uh-huh. have I have more than one phone number. So if if the phone number shows up and you see if you see that number that's you know you don't want to answer, cool, I got you, no problem. All right. I called him for my other phone number, and guess what, bro? Yeah. Guess what? He hello, this is a uh, cat. Cats, 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 uh, trucking. How can I help you? I was like, bro, what's going on? I was like, you know, this is Sean. I'm calling back. You know, we lost connection. I got, I got good sitting on. He goes, oh, uh, okay, uh huh. I was like, yeah, mm hmm. So I was <laughs> like, uh, so he started asking me questions and he goes, so. Are you a driver or are you a recruiter? I was like, no. I said, let me explain myself, which I, you know, which I try to do. I says, you know, I says, I network with, you know, I have a network of drivers, you know, that I network with that they use the information that I get, uh, that I get as value. And what I mean is value, if I give you a call. I get the information. They like it. They'll give you a call and they could turn around and say, I heard, say, Hey, I heard it from, you know, such and such. He says that, you know, that this is a good company. We can see if this company works out. I said, I'm also a driver. I said, I've been driving for six years. So I use my experience that I have, uh, to make these phone calls valuable for, my listeners and for the and for my trucking network. Oh, 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 okay. So, are you looking for a job? I was like, well, I might. You know, I said I might be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I might be. Uh-huh. But I said I also again, I also network with a number of drivers that are looking for you know for the job so so then you know he focused all instead of focusing on the questions he focused all the way down at the at the last question on the list and that question is how do you 
how do you retain your drivers? And he goes into a little rant like, well, um, you know, the last question on the list just kind of just kind of had me thinking that, you know, what do you mean by how do we retain our drivers? You know, we we treat our drivers good, yada, 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 and this, that, and the third. And I was like, well, I was like, that's a legitimate question, right? I mean, I'm 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 uh, going to I'm going to assume that you don't get questions of these magnitudes. You know, you probably just get the standard how much money I make, how many miles I get, how much home time there is, how much is the truth.